the season when Jesus was born. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to have a joyful moan in their body. You woke up with the activity of your limbs. Still in your right mind. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord this morning. I said praise the Lord everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to open up our service for the scripture and pray. Amen. I'll be reading Psalms 135th chapter verses 1 through 3. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. I have read for you Psalms 135, verses 1 through 3. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You deserve the highest form of praise, and that is hallelujah. Father God, we thank you on this morning, Father God. We praise you on this morning, Father God. We thank you, hallelujah, for being God all by yourself, Father God. Father God, we come to say thank you. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for another Sunday, Father God. Father God, we thank you for your son's birth, Father God. Father God, hallelujah, we just come to say thank you. Father God, we come to praise you on this morning, Father God. Hallelujah, because you're worthy of the praise, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, and we thank you for the service on today, Father God. And Father God, let whatever be done on this morning, Father God, be done for your glory, your honor, and your praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's thank our, our very own deacon, this joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to be grateful this morning. The song says, that's why I'm glad. The windows of heaven are open and the fire is brewing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all already know this song. You ought to put your hands together.
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, if we believe that, come on, let's lift up our morning hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Amen. Amen.
give God praise, honor, and glory today. Amen. But certainly God has been good to us. Amen. In spite of all that we've gone through in 2020, he's still a good God. He's a God that can do all things but fail. So uh, we honor the Lord Jesus today. We welcome you today to New Life Christian Church. We welcome you to worship with us, not just to view, but to worship with us. Those that are joining uh, by way of Zoom and Facebook Live uh, and those that will follow us on YouTube, we would that you would worship with us. Amen. God has been too good to us. Amen. Amen. And that is in spite of it all. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, 2020 has been a very difficult year. Very difficult. But I need to uh, uh, broadcast this morning. Uh, breaking news that the grave is still empty. The tomb is still vacant. And he lives. How do I know he lives? Because he lives in me. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we uh, certainly want to thank all that joined us on our Christmas Eve service. Amen. Uh, go back and view it. Amen. It's on uh, YouTube or on our Facebook page. We want to give everyone an opportunity to sow into the kingdom. My brothers and my sisters, it is so important that we continue to, to give to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Buildings may be closed. Churches, church buildings may be closed, but the church of Jesus Christ is still open. Amen. And this is uh, certainly a test to our faith. Can we still worship? Can we still love the Lord? Can we still give to the Lord? Amen. Even during these times that we have to, we have to uh, worship virtually, virtual worship together uh, on different so different media platforms. Amen. Amen. But the good news is that we are we are carrying the gospel message. Amen. Into all nations, and that's what we're called to do. And Jesus said, "Go into all nations, baptizing." Amen. Amen. Amen sharing this glorious gospel and we are uh, we don't have borders anymore we don't have to get on the plane anymore we don't have to fly the world we can just click a button and we're in South Africa, we're in Bermuda we're in uh, South Korea so please, my brothers and my sisters, continue to sow into the kingdom, amen. amen Amen. if you're going to give we have several ways of giving at New Life Church, we thank all of you that have been giving thus far, uh, but if you want to give, uh, you can go to paypal.com, enter newlifebloomfield at gmail.com. Again, newlifebloomfield at gmail.com. If you're giving by way of Cash App, the Cash App ID is 973-670-1890. Amen. If you're giving by way of gift fly, amen. The same applies. New Life Christian Church, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Amen. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, it is the second day of Kwanzaa Kujijakalia. Amen. Amen. And uh, certainly we want to amen. continue to celebrate, amen, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Amen. 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 At this time, I'm going to get out the way. I'm going to let our music ministry, amen, set us on fire, and we're going to come back, and we're going to preach a little while. Come on, come on, raise your hand wherever you are. Come on, and give God some praise. Come on, give him a wave off as, as we prepare to, as we prepare for the gospel. Tremble at his voice. 
And this is church. Bring your Bibles. That's bring your right. Bibles. That's right. That's right. Let's go electronically. Amen. To the New Testament book of Philippians. In the fourth chapter. And we'll be reading from the New International Version of the Holy Bible. And it reads on this wise. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed, hungry, or living in plenty or want. Thus far, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to uh, talk for the next few moments, which are ours, with the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to pose a question today. A question that's been eating at me. And my question this morning is, is God enough? Bible. Is God's love enough? Let's pray. Eternal God, fill our mouth with important stuff. Sit us down when we said enough. It is in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I suggest a movie that came out on the 25th called Soul. Amen. Starring Jamie Foxx. Uh, a lot of... Uh, theological connotations in there. Uh, but the story is about, not to give it give too much of it, but it's about a musician that is looking for purpose and contentment. Uh, there's a line that uh, in, in the movie, a woman says, uh, uh, tells a story about two little fish and they're swimming and they meet an older fish and the uh, the older fish says, uh, how's the water, boys? And the young fish said, well, we, we're, we're looking for the ocean. And, and the, uh, the old fish said, well, you're in the water. Uh, and the younger fish said, water? We're looking for the ocean. And, and my brothers and my sisters, I, I believe that that, that rings true to many of us today. We're, we're looking for the ocean, and we're already in the water. Uh -oh. uh, are, are you content with what you have? I, I mean, really content. Don't, don't fool me now. Uh, are you content with where you are in life and your station in life? Uh -huh. The Bible makes it clear that our satisfaction is not contingent on earthly sources. Uh, but as Christians, our conversations surrounding the issue of contentment, they're, they're insufficient. Uh, I, I've been preaching a long time. We preach God's love is enough. Uh, and, and what more is there to want? But the reality, there's always something to want. There's always things in life, in this world, in ourselves that we want to change if we could. Uh, how many of us uh, could change our height if we could? Oh, okay, I'm the only one. All right. Some, some, some of us would change our complexion or, or our hair texture or if we could. And God knows we would change what's in our bank account. Uh, how then can we ever achieve contentment? Uh, is, is it by forcing a smile on our face or, or, or stifling our desires? Is it by overcompensating and, 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 and doing things uh, like buying stuff, buying stuff we can't afford, trying to impress folks that don't like you, never will like you, ain't never going to like you? Mm -hmm. uh, so in this discourse this morning, I, I want to explore the complex relationship between our promised contentment in Christ and our unshakable desire for more. Is, is, is that all right? Uh, uh, before we can reconcile the two, we, we need to clear up a theological truth. And, and, and that truth is, in Christ, you have more than enough. Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's the whole sermon right there. But let me, let me push my case. Uh, 
Uh, our God is a God of abundance, uh, not depravity. Uh, uh, this principle appears and reappears and reappears throughout the Bible. Uh, uh, all through the Bible. Come here. Paul, Paul says, and God is able to bless abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Come here, John. John said, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, I come to that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Uh, Paul says in Philippians that, and my God will meet all of your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, the psalmist said, uh, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil. I'm talking about an abundant God. Uh, the psalmist wrote, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Uh, come here, David. David said, I will be fully satisfied uh, as with the richest of foods. With the singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but we serve uh, an abundant God. Uh, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks uh, this water I give will never thirst. And Indeed, the water I give them will become in them spring of water, springs of water welling up as eternal life. Uh, I know it sounds cliche. I, I know it, it, it sounds trite sometimes, but God's love really is enough. Amen. I, I used to think that Christians would just rattle this saying off just to make themselves feel better, but this is a spiritual truth that God is enough. But true understanding of our own spiritual abundance uh, uh, shouldn't just make us feel good, but it should move us to action. Uh, not, not, not just the feeling. But what are you saying, preacher? Well, uh, uh, what kind of action do you mean? Well, uh, you, you know you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Uh, so, so, so how does it move you to action? Well, say somebody's struggling with their finances, but but you come across uh, uh, that person, you might say, uh, I, I, I can't help you. I need to take care of myself first. Uh, Lord. Uh, there's no way I can give money to somebody or help somebody until my situation improves. Mm -hmm. But but if you're in touch with your own abundance in Christ, you'll know that uh, through though your bank account uh, says that you're in lack, that the truth of the matter is that you do have enough. Uh, you're empowered to give out of your spiritual supply and not just your earthly supply. Amen. Somebody needs to hear me today. You give even when it's not practical. Uh, well, what are you talking about, preacher? Uh, uh, trusting that God will always provide you with all that you need. Amen. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but it's at the heart of the gospel. Uh, you remember when Jesus commends the woman that gave all she had to live on. Uh, so when we take an honest look at the scripture, God calls us to prioritize radical generosity over earthly practicality. Let me say that again. We need to prioritize gener uh, radical generosity over earthly practicality. Uh, that means uh, uh, you need to give even when you think you can't give. Because that gives God the opportunity to meet all of your needs. Uh, when you have more than enough, this statement is a truth uh, we uh, uh, can wrap our minds around. It's not just some incantation to recite. Uh, it's a spiritual truth. So uh, let me press my case. It's okay to be honest. Uh, when you want uh, something you don't have. So many of us try to uh, deny that we want things. But it's okay to be honest right. when you want something that you don't have. Right. Uh, knowing your abundance in Christ doesn't mean denying your desires. Yeah. Right. Can I be real for a second? Uh, 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 if you desire something, it's all right. Amen. I 
I know some single women who are, are, are discontent with being single. Oh, don't get that. Y'all don't get mad at me. Uh, 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 and, and I can tell not because of what they say, uh, but because uh, they don't say certain things. Okay. Uh, they frequently bring up how uh, perfectly fine they are with being single and, and how they're, uh, uh, they're not at all interested in a relationship. Okay. Uh, though their actions suggest Something different. Uh -huh. you, you know the kind I'm talking about. Always talking about Jesus is my man. That's right. Uh -huh. Jesus is all I need. Uh -huh. uh, well, who are you trying to convince? Uh -huh. uh, they attempt to mask their desires with a proud facade. And, uh, and, and, and that's nice. That's nice. But if you desire a husband, say that you want to be married. Uh, and there are other single women who, who don't talk much about their singleness. Uh, when I ask uh, whether they're looking for a relationship, they happily admit uh, that a relationship would be nice. But they're waiting for the right person. Yeah. Now, that's the right attitude to have. Uh, there's no desperation in their tone. Uh, they're not uh, coming uh, out looking crazy, trying to dress like their 15-year-old daughter. Uh, they ain't faking the funk. They're coming from a place of abundance. Uh, yet they're not afraid to acknowledge their unfulfilled wants. Uh, this attitude to me seems more practical. It, it, it's a better attitude to take. Uh, but are, uh, are these singles discontent for wanting something they don't have? My Lord. Sometimes we make the mistake of believing that contentment means having an uh, uh, attitude of denying your wants, mm -hmm. lying to yourself and to others, and, 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 and taking away your own happiness. My Lord. Uh, it's, a nat it's natural to have desires, to, to have wants, to have aspirations. Uh, that, that's why it's important to set goals. That, that's why uh, uh, it, it, it's important to, to, to write, write out your goals and, uh, and look at others to glean from them and, and to see, well, if, if they can do it, I can as well. Right. Uh, a truly content person has the courage to admit when they want something, they don't have. Why? Because they know they know that regardless of where they are, uh, regardless of unmet desires, uh, that God has all that they need. God has them right where God wants them to be. Uh, and Jesus is the ultimate example of this. Uh, you do remember in the garden, uh, Jesus uh, fell on his face and, and he said these words. Father, if there be any other way, mm -hmm. let this uh, cup pass me by. Uh, but thanks be to God, he came to himself. And he said, but not my will, but thy will be done. Right. You see here, Jesus doesn't pretend to be thrilled about his uh, imminent death on the cross. Uh, he admits his desire for a different faith. Uh, but here's what I, I need you to notice. Jesus doesn't accuse the Father of holding out on him. Uh, he doesn't act like he deserves better. Uh, instead, with those words, not my will, but thy will be done, uh, he acknowledges the Father's ultimate sovereignty in directing his path, uh, whether it's a path he likes or not. And, and that's where we need to be, uh, acknowledging that God uh, has us right where God wants us. Oh, Come in, Paul. Uh, Paul said it this way. Uh, most church sermons on contentment stem from our scripture today. Uh, Paul uh, boldly uh, claims in Philippians 4 and 11. Oh, uh, he said, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content Whatever the circumstances, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have a whole lot. I've learned the secret of being content in every situation. Whether well fed or hungry. Whether living in plenty or in want. You see, in this letter, Paul tutors us on how to live joyous, happy, and free. Whether you're eating peanut butter and jelly or filet mignon. Uh, he said, I've done them both, and I can be happy either way. Uh, you see,
seen, even though Paul was uh, uh, up to his neck with problems, he still had joy. Yes. Paul was arrested and locked up for preaching the gospel, but he still had joy. Paul found himself shipwrecked, but he still had joy. Paul went from uh, being a well-to-do Pharisee, having a 401B, having a good pension, and a benefit package, to going to a storefront preacher, but he still had joy. I need you to know uh, that through all your circumstances, you can still have joy. Well, when uh, it's like this, I've learned how to be content. It's not my place in life, but it's my perspective in life. All I'm trying to say is that wherever you are, God's got you there. God's with you. Uh, Paul also said he pushed the case. Uh, he testified in 2 Corinthians. He said, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan uh, that tormented me. He said, three times I went to the Lord to take it away. But God said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. You see, Paul's not afraid to admit that the thorn in his flesh tormented him. However, like Jesus, he trusted in the sovereignty of God and God's plan. You see, contentment is not the absence of want. Uh, you're allowed to want more while still knowing that God's got you where you are, that God's got a place for you, that you are enough. And that God is more than enough. I'm done. Uh, but uh, we can choose either to focus on what we don't have, or we can choose to focus on our abundant nature. What is it that defines you? Or what is it uh, you identify with? Uh, what do you focus on? Because whatever it is you focus on becomes your reality. Do you identify with your lack, uh, with the lack of money, the lack of a child, lack of an education, the lack of health? Or do you identify with the real you? The abundant you, the overflowing you, the ever satisfied child of a king you, that God can do it. God's done it before, he'll do it again. You know you've been redeemed, uh, that you've been delivered from the curse, that you're more than a conqueror, that you're the head and not the tail, that you got blessings that overflow. Uh, you can still want things, but still be content. And contentment boils down to one word. Uh, that's trust. And trust silences envy. Uh, you ever seen somebody that's envious of somebody else? Wanting what somebody else has? Trying to be like somebody? Trying to impress somebody? It's envy. My brothers and my sisters, there's no need to be envious when you're content. Because that means you're satisfied with what God has made you. We're called to have faith where God has us to be. But Satan will do everything to trick us into believing that we're missing out. Uh, he devised tactics uh, to try to pull us down, make us feel less than. But in the garden, way back in Genesis, uh, God tells the story, uh, the creation story, how he created a light to govern over the day. And he a lesser light to govern over the night. So why in the world, if you're the lesser light, are you jealous of the greater light? You still a light. You better light where you are. You better light it up where you are. I'm glad about it. Some of us are discontent. Uh, because we're the lesser light, looking to be the greater light, envious of the greater light. You better let your light so shine. I'm done. Uh, but if you're going to have uh, true contentment, uh, and I declare, uh, this is my declarative statement, that God is enough. Uh, God is all that we need. Going back to our initial question, can we really be content with God's love alone? The answer is yes. But discontentment 
does not require the abandonment of your desires. You can still have desires. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm glad about it. I'm glad that we can still be content and still have desires. I'm done. Our scripture says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. I have learned to be content with whatever my circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in every situation. Can I tell you the secret? Can I tell you the secret? Well, in verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Can I talk about him? Can I talk about him? Can I tell you the greatest man that ever lived? He had no servant, yet they called him master. He had no formal degree, yet they called him teacher. He had no medicine, yet they called him healer. Now, he had no army, but he conquered the world. He was not a weatherman, yet he calmed the storms. He had no boat, so he stepped out and walked on the water. He committed no crime. Yet he was crucified. Do you know it today? He died on a cross. Yet he rose from the grave. He was buried in a tomb. Yet he lives today. I'm glad you know it. Do you know it today? Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my Jesus? The Bible says he's the king. He's the king of kings. He's the king of the Jews. That's his racial kingdom. He's the king of Israel. That's his national kingdom. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of all ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's my king. I wonder, do you know him? Do you know my Jesus? Do you know him? David says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. He's my king. He's a sovereign king. No means can measure him. No limit is love. No far telescope can bring in the visibility. The coastline of his shoulder supply. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessing. He's enduringly strong, eternally sincere, eternally steadfast, morally graceful, empirically powerful, impartially merciful. Do you know him today? Do you know my Jesus? Do you know my... Getting happy now. Do you know my Jesus? And he's the greatest phenomenon that never crossed the horizon. He's God's son. Sin a savior, sin a piece of civilization. He stands in solitude of himself. I love it today. I'm content today. God is more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. God's love enough? I believe it is. And we can be content in God's love. The secret is I can do not some things, all things in Christ who strengthens me. Come on, come on. Let's come to the altar. In you. Come to the altar. Come closer to the screen. Just close your eyes. I want to pray for you. As we come to the close of a, the year 2020, come on, I want you.
want you to pour it out to God. You can be honest with God. You can tell God the desires of your heart. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Now, all that stuff, all that, all that other stuff. That's, that's easy. That's easy. That's easy. Oh, God. Seek ye first the kingdom. Our God and our Father, we've come first to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness, your mercy that's brand new every day. We thank you, Lord, that your love is more than enough. Times change. Circumstances change, but you are steadfast. Movable. And so, God, we've come first to say we love you we give you honor and praise and the glory. We have no other God to turn to. You're a sufficient God. And God, as we look past over our years, we see it was nobody but you. Nobody but you that made ways out of nowhere. When we didn't know how we were going to raise those children, God, you made a way. When we didn't know how we were going to pay the bills, God, you made a way. When we were sick in our body, God, you, you touched us with your divine finger of love. And we rose from our sick bed. God, when, when we were saddened with, with pain or grief and bereavement, you held us in the cradle of your hand. And so, God... Although this has been a trying and turbulent year, of years so many losses, losses of loved ones and finances, through it all, God, you've been there and you've been with us. So God, we are praying that you will heal every broken heart. Pray, God, that you will meet every need according to their riches and glory. So many people are in pain, suffering silently, but God, we pray that you will be a mind regulator, be that heart fixer. Going to homes right now, God, touch children and grandchildren, oh God. There are those that don't know how they're going to pay their bills, but God, we declare that you will supply every need. declare and decree that next year will be one of the greatest years of our life. As we say farewell to 2020 and walk into 2021, God, we know that you have blessings abundantly on the other side. So God, we're declaring good health. We're declaring prosperity. We're declaring, oh God, that this gospel will be preached in all nations. God, somebody right now struggling. Let them know the struggle is over. Let them know, God, that you are their high time. Strengthen them on every leaning side. Strengthen mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, nieces and nephews, grandchildren. God, we pray that you will strengthen these your people. God, we know that if we look to you, our help, our way man, God, that you can do all things but fail. So Lord, bless those that we're duty bound to pray for those that are in hospitals and hospices. Pray God for our health care workers, those on the front line. Pray God for our teachers and administrators. Oh God, we pray for all those that are struggling now. Touch right now. As we get a hold of this pandemic, oh God, help us to be wise, help us to stay safe. Help us to be vigilant in the days to come. 
knowing, oh God, that you're going to make it all right. Now, God, we thank you for this watch. We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have conceived. We thank you, Lord, most of all for these, your people. We pray your blessings and your benediction upon each of them. Go before them to guide and behind to protect. On either side to prompt them up. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Present us spotless before your throne. May the grace of God and the sweet holy communion rest, rule, and abide with us. Henceforth now and forevermore, in the people of God, 